Hi, my friend, and welcome back to the podcast. I am kind of excited about this topic, and I ended up writing a longer script than I thought. So let's get started. Do you ever want to improve your strategies at work, but you can't seem to figure out how to do it or where to find the time? This episode is for you. Whether you're neurodivergent or not, this episode can actually really help you. But again, this is an ADHD podcast, so it is tailored to those of us who are neurodivergent. So we're going to talk about different areas of work life, set aside intentional time to work towards improvement in each area, and we're going to talk about how to do that. You may also be asking, how will this help me? Or why should I do this? And I have the answer. We have way too much to keep track of, and we have a huge lack of self-awareness in this way. We tend to make the same mistakes over and over again because we have a hard time looking back at our mistakes and then changing them in real time. This has a lot to do with the active processing that I talked about before, that I talked about um, in a couple episodes ago. So <laughs> this mistake making is more passive. We as ADHDers need an active way to process these things, how to improve at work, how to improve with your money, how to improve your organization all of those different things. So, speaking of active processing, I have a freebie follow along for each area so that you can reflect and think about alternatives throughout this episode. So, why is this even important? You may be wondering why we have to do this, but your neurotypical peers don't seem to have to do it. It's valid to feel that unfairness, and I want to make sure that it's clear. Your emotions are valid, so make sure that you feel them. The part that sucks about all of this is that ADHD brains are wired differently. We have a hard time with working memory, organization, planning, task initiation, follow-through, emotional regulation, self-reflection, and more. Each and every one of these symptoms will impact your work life just like it impacts your personal life and any other areas you struggle with in life. So, here's a little anecdote from my own life that shows how this kind of happened for me. I improved as a teacher as I taught each year. I'm on year nine now. Last year was my eighth year, right? I had a coach, or I have a coach, but Last year, I worked very closely with her to make a plan and to set up my room so that I could take pictures of it and keep the abundance of notes that I had in order to set up the classroom for success before the kids started this year. Let me say this again. This is year nine of teaching for me, and I am just feeling like I have a handle on it, like I'm good at it, like I can do it with my eyes closed. I mean, teaching in general, I could usually do that, but with all the other things that come along with it, now I finally feel confident in those things, those different things. And let me tell you, there are still some things that I don't feel the most confident about. And that is something that may not change. You have strengths and you have weaknesses. So a good reflection question is, what symptoms of your ADHD impact you the most at work? Do you struggle more with planning, organization, memory, task switching, or a different symptom? Find that symptom and write it down so you can reflect as we go through these 10 areas of work that you could focus on. Now, like I said, or like I always say, Please do not use this podcast to shame yourself for certain tasks or areas you may never have even thought of, or maybe you feel you are super bad at it and need a lot of improvement. I do not consent to using this podcast against yourself, okay? Another reminder is to try one at a time. 
As ADHDers, we tend to go all in, and that almost always leads to overwhelm, frustration, and ultimately giving up. It takes time to improve these skills, but I believe in you. We can improve our skills at work. So let's get into it. So I'm going to list the 10 areas, and then I'm going to go through them one by one. Number one is attention and focus. Number two, time management. Number three, energy levels. Number four, task switching. Number five, organizational systems. Number six, work environment. Number seven, support and accountability. Number eight, stress reflection. Number nine, work relationships. And number 10, self-care. All right, so we're starting with number one, attention and focus. So how do you typically manage distractions in your workspace? Do you need to declutter, put away your phone? What about using specific tabs or using a completely separate browser for work that is separate from your personal accounts so you're not signed in to any social media accounts or things like that? What strategies can you put in place in order to maintain focus throughout the day? Reflect on what gets you off task and come up with a solution. For me, I'm a teacher. So, I mean, that's my full-time job. I do a lot of things, but my full-time job is teaching. So I have little alarms and reminders for all the tasks I need to complete in a 2.5 hour session. For example, teaching, assessing, differentiating, taking attendance, data collection, and sticking to our schedule. I make a plan at the beginning of each day. And it helps me keep my attention and keep it in the right place and, you know, help me get distracted less. I'm not going to say in any of these things that I don't get distracted anymore or that I've cured my time management. These things are meant to keep improving and it's the work of our lives, okay? It takes a while to master things like this and some of these things We can't master and we just have to accept getting better. The other thing that I do do with these alarms is I delegate some of them to one of my assistants. I have my own alarms and she has the alarms that we all kind of need to stay on task. The next one is time management. So do you often feel that you are running out of time to complete tasks on your to-do list? It makes sense because you have ADHD and with ADHD comes time blindness. We do not develop the sense of passing time. So I suggest putting clocks everywhere and using some type of work versus break time system like the Pomodoro technique where you work for a certain amount of time and then you pair it with a break. Some people do a 25 minute work session with a five minute break. I prefer 60 minute work sessions with 25 minute breaks. If your job like mine doesn't really lend to this, I'd invite you to set alarms and reminders for things that need to be done at certain times. And again, delegate these to people that you can delegate them to. I had my assistant put those alarms for attendance, center time ending, and for their breaks for when we have a 10 to 15 minute until dismissal and when to turn in the turn on the walkie talkies for our dismissal process. She has those alarms and I have my own personal ones for specific activities, students I need to work with, data I need to take, and time to build relationship with my students. There is no way that my terrible working memory would be able to hold all of that in my head. Alarms, reminders, and making a plan at the beginning of each day works for me. So what would support you in managing yourself within time? Some people like time blocking, working blocks and break blocks. Being specific about what you plan to do in each part of the day is really important. All of these can help in time management within work. Bonus idea. If you have a door to an office or some way to put a sign on 
that says something, I don't know, funny about your short attention span and that you'd love to talk but you can't right now and politely ask them to send you an email or come back later. I've actually used this strategy and it worked really well for me. The people that just wanted to pop in and say hi waved to me through the window in my door and went along their way and I got back to talking with them when I had time and when I was on a break. The next area is energy levels. As ADHDers and as humans, our energy levels fluctuate throughout the day. But for ADHDers, it's a little bit more of an intense ebb and flow. So we have a lot more ups and downs than the neurotypical person. So take advantage of the time that you feel most energized throughout the day. Get the hard stuff done then. For me, it's in the morning. So I get a lot of my personal development done, my work and all of that done in the morning. So that when your levels drop, you can do the tasks that are at a lower caliber. Think about how you can structure your schedule to align with your energy peaks and balances. For me, that means when I have work to do that I can't do when students are there, I go in early. Morning is my energetic time. After work, I'm almost useless because my energy levels have dropped. So I can do menial chores, but doing anything that involves a lot of brain power is out the door for me. Reflect on your energy levels and when you have the most energy and when you are the most, you know, useless for lack of a better term and structure your day to, you know, accommodate to that. This can also take time because you may need to track a little bit of your energy because, again, self-awareness is hard. So the next area is task switching. This refers to moving from one activity or task to another one or even like bigger task switching or transitioning in seasons. Like right now, we're transitioning into the holiday season. So an example can be that transitioning into the holiday season from summer into school or on a smaller scale from a meeting back to your office or from your break back to work or from your car just into the building. For me, because we put eight to nine schedule pieces into a 2.5 hour period, let me explain What I do is I teach preschool and we have 2.5 hours about, actually I think it's a little bit more, and what I do for the children, and it helps me, is we have a physical schedule with Velcro on it and photos of what is happening during each part of the day, and the kids manage that now, and I've I've become really good at task switching because of the whole you know, environment of teaching preschool and the changes that happen from day to day pretty much all the time. Uh, This also applies to those big task transitions like the seasons changing, school year starting and ending, and other bigger transitions in life, marriage, having kids, etc. Usually you can tell what your patterns are and how you transition. Is there a way that you can improve you, your transitions to kind of reduce stress and frustration. For example, putting a transition activity into your daily transitions can help your mind transition from thing to thing. Hey there. If you're looking for a game changer in managing your ADHD, let me tell you about something that's made a huge impact on my life. Focused, the Adult ADHD Group Coaching Program by Kristen Carter. This isn't just another program. It's a community. It's a roadmap. It's a lifeline for adults with ADHD who want to thrive. Inside of Focus, you'll find weekly coaching calls with Kristen packed with actionable insights, a supportive community of adults who get it. They get what it's like to live with ADHD. You'll get tools and strategies that actually work for our brains. No fluff, just real results. 
I've been a part of Focused for over a year, and let me tell you, it's where I've learned so much of what I share with you on Authentically ADHD. It's been a game changer for me, and I think it could be for you too. And here's the best part. If you use my link to join, we both save money. It's a win-win. So if you've been looking for the right ADHD support, this is your sign to check it out. Head to the link in my show notes to learn more and sign up. Let's thrive together with tools and support that we need to succeed. Are you also loving what we're doing on Authentically ADHD but want to take your experience to the next level? Well, I have got something for you. Introducing the Authentically ADHD Patreon, your VIP pass to the ultimate ADHD support hub. As a Patreon member, you'll unlock exclusive perks like early access to every single episode, hear it before anyone else does, a treasure trove of resources that I've made, tools, guides, and worksheets to help you thrive in everyday aspects of life, direct coaching opportunities with me designed to help you harness your ADHD powers, and the cherry on top, an incredible community of like-minded individuals who just get it. You're not alone on this journey, and together we can be unstoppable. By joining Patreon, you're not just supporting the podcast. You're fueling a movement. Together, we're breaking stigmas, embracing authenticity, and creating a world where ADHD is seen as a strength and not just a struggle. So what are you waiting for? Head over to patreon.com backslash authentically ADHD and join the family today. Let's keep growing, thriving, and showing up authentically together. Hope to see you over there. Back to the show. All right, my friend, we are halfway through. Are you still with me? The next one is the one I struggle with the most, and that is organizational systems. There are so many things that teachers need to keep organized, like student paperwork, unit studies, our own portfolio for evaluations, lesson planning, data collection, and just a bunch of organizational things and we also have to keep our data for a few years so there also needs to be an organizational strategy for that. I've tried all different strategies such as file folders for each area, labeled bins, trying to organize digitally, etc. And it's a lot. I found that keeping my spaces decluttered includes not keeping every single paper. I go through it like I do my closet. If I haven't used the resource in the last year, I throw it out. I keep different items in different areas of the room. For example, my circle time stuff stays at circle. Assessments are in the area that I will usually give them or in the binder or whatever it is that I use to assess the student. So, or like... How are your organizational systems? Are the ones that you've put in place working? Do you have any systems in place? Can you find what you need when you need it? That's one of the biggest questions that I ask myself a lot is can I find what I need when I need it? If somebody asks me for a piece of paperwork, am I able to locate where that is? If not, it may be time to create a new organizational system for that area. So, are these are like are there areas where you feel super disorganized? What changes can you make to make it work for you? I'm asking these questions because I want you to actively process. I want you to reflect. I also would love for you to please stop trying to make your organizational systems look pretty. Usually as ADHDers, we need more of an open open organizational system because out of sight usually equals out of mind for us. So if your organizational system requires open shelving, get open shelving. Another tip I have is to designate a drunk drawer. 
you're going to have that type of space anyway. So I find it useful to designate a spot for that junk. And this way you can control how big that drawer or container is for all the random stuff that you're going to throw in there. Believe me, I understand the need for that junk pile. Also, put trash cans everywhere. I have um, three, four trash cans in my classroom. There's one in the bathroom. Then there's a bigger one for the room that's, you know, near the sink. And then there's another smaller one for the kids to go to during the day for me to go to. And then I have a personal one under my desk. We throw out a lot of things and we don't like to always walk to the garbage can. I'm not sure what it is about not wanting to throw things away, but when the garbage can is right there, it's a lot easier. I use this at home as well. So the next area is all about your environment. Do you have an environment that is set up to minimize distractions and increase joy? Yes, I said increase joy. Think about it. If you don't find your work environment aesthetically pleasing, you probably don't like going there and that affects your work performance. Create an environment with lighting, seating, and simple decoration that works for you. Reflect on the changes you could make that will improve your focus and joy so that you want to go to your workplace and you can improve your work performance. For me, I love to see the kids' artwork all around the room, and my desk is decorated with things that I've gotten from students in the past, my crystals that I use for my energies and things like that, and, you know, decorative teacher things that I like, and just a couple, okay? The ways that I use to decorate my desk is by having reminders taped up in an aesthetically pleasing way. That way, it's a double whammy and I can do two things at once. All right, we have four more. I'm telling you, I didn't expect this episode to be this long, but I guess I had a lot more to say than I thought. I mean, this is something I've been working on for a few years, so I totally understand how hard this all is, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. The next area is a reflection on stress. Most jobs cause some type of stress. Actually, I'm not sure what job wouldn't cause some type of stress and or overwhelm at times. So when do you feel the most stressed or overwhelmed? What ADHD specific challenges are contributing to those emotions and overwhelm? And what coping strategies can you use to lessen the stress and overwhelm? Personally, I use mind maps to plan and solve problems, and I use loops to lessen over auditory stimulation. So like, I get overstimulated by auditory like noise. So I teach preschool, kids are loud. So I use the brand loops. This is not an advertisement. I just love mine a lot. Uh, the brand, it's literally L-O-O-P-S, and they are little things that go in your ears that are appropriate and allowed under the ADA, and they can be used as an accommodation to kind of make it so that less auditory noise, like background noise, gets in. And I can hear my students in front of me and focus on what they're saying. And I don't get as overstimulated by the auditory noise and then add it on to that with the, you know, constant touching of me and all the other things that kind of overstimulate me. This really helps me by using those even in just one ear. It really, really helps me. I also make it a non-negotiable to take my lunch break intentionally not at my desk or even in the building. Build in ways that you can manage and cope with your stress throughout the workday because ADHD brains will tend to ruminate on the negative, meaning being stressed out will compromise our productivity. Next up is support and accountability. Do you have a relationship with your boss to be able to ask for a certain type of accountability? Or do you have someone who is knowledgeable and who you trust to ask for some help? 
is there someone you can think of to ask? How can you build stronger accountability in order to stay on track at work? I, like I said, I have a teaching coach. I also have trusted coworkers and really good admin who help keep me on track and accountable without feeling super micromanaged most of the time. This next one kind of goes along with the previous one that is working relationships. We all need that coworker to talk to who understands and who will vent with you. Somebody who you trust, who will not go spreading your business around the workplace. Do you have any coworkers that you trust that you can go vent to? Do you have coworkers that you can go out to lunch with? Developing working relationships is super hard, but it's important to have that community and connection at work. Are there specific practices you can try to connect better with your coworkers and or your boss or administration? Reflect on that and try to start cultivating ways to build those relationships. Last but certainly not least is self-care. Do you prioritize self-care for work-life balance? If you're listening to this episode, I'm going to assume the answer is no, but I'm not going to discredit those of you that do and are just trying to improve it, honestly. But most of us have trouble with prioritizing self-care and having a work-life balance. So how can you build in routines and habits to support you and your mental health? Because it's important. I've had to go to the hospital from being in burnout. And no, not just the lovely one day stay, okay? The one where they keep you and they need to observe you because you went a little batshit, okay? Please don't let it get that bad. Please, I'm begging you. Build in those good things that make you feel good throughout the day, okay? Build in those things like I talk about with my routines. Long walks in the morning, journaling out my thoughts, all of the things, okay? Build in breaks. Take the day off if you don't feel like you can give your all that day, okay? All right, my friends, we went over a lot today. So give yourself grace and compassion. This does not all have to be done at once. Do one thing at a time. Also, share this episode if you found it helpful. That's all I have for now, my friends. Stay authentic, and we will talk soon.